I'm uh, Niels Tenhoever. I work for Article 19, where I'm the head of digital. Um, as head of digital, I'm responsible for uh, three different things. One thing is a global internet policy, is to ensure that human rights are enshrined in the protocols, standards, and governance of the internet, to ensure that there is a free flow of information, freedom of association, and uh, the right to privacy. And then secondly, I am uh, working uh, with uh, our eight local offices all around the world to ensure that we're also connect with projects to, uh, 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 to the local needs. And then thirdly, my job is to keep the infrastructure, the digital infrastructure of Article 19 uh, free, open and secure. I think the internet should be accessible for everyone and rights should be able to uh, be exercised there. But as we've seen, uh, censorship is rife on the internet and a lot of countries are, uh, are making use of this. Just a few days ago, the uh, uh, social media and even mobile payments were blocked in Uganda during the elections. We got now a lot of new elections coming up in Africa where, uh, um, where we expect things might arise. But also in Europe we see uh, an increasing uh, use of censorship. But censorship is only one part of the coin. And the other part of the coin is privacy, of course. With uh, enormous uh, mass surveillance campaigns and what what is actually what we all thought that would be impossible has actually just happened. So almost everything that was revealed by Edward Snowden is now legalized in hindsight by the government. We've seen this happening in France. We've seen this happen. Uh, we've seen law proposals in the UK, but we also see that in the Netherlands. So I think we really need to be vigilant right now to ensure that we can keep the internet and strengthen it as a global public space that is also a, a rights-enabling environment. It's a war against risk, but uh, without risks, there's no freedoms. And unfortunately, this is an equation that's often not made, that the illusion is created that with these increasing powers of uh, governments, uh, secret services, police, there will be a more uh, secure and safe environment. But we just had, I was just on a panel with a uh, officer of the financial information unit of the, intelli the financial intelligence unit of, uh, of Belgium. And he said that the Belgian state had all the information that was needed to, uh, to, uh, to ensure that to prevent the, uh, the Paris attacks. So they had all the dots, they simply not connect them. Yeah. So the secret services do not need more information. The police do not, does not need more information. They need more capacity to do their work properly. They should make more efficient use of the powers that we have. And we, in the meantime, should ensure that we have strong oversight of what they are doing. And uh, I think that should be the first steps and not give them in their uh, endless hunger to information about us, more information about us, because then we might give more away of our freedoms than we actually realize. And when we realize it, it might be too late. So we need to understand and choose what kind of world we want the internet to be. Do we want the broad sidewalks? Do we want a priority lane for the police? Do we want to have to, have to, have to give everyone equal access? Because that's, why, that's what made the internet great. Permissionless innovation. And the internet was just a, um, a network in which all the nodes are equal. And innovation is happening at the edges. So everyone can do on the internet whatever he or she wants. And that is what made the internet a great engine for freedom of expression, but also for economic growth. You do not need to ask for permission to do anything on the internet. Whether it's creating websites or posting content, creating a new protocol to transmit information or to uh, 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 send video conference or imagery uh, like we're doing now. There are so many new exciting ways in which this can be done. 
And this is happening, this innovation is going on because you can try it out and play and, and, and succeed and fail without harming others. And that's such a, uh, and that's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to work on uh, law, uh, architecture and public opinion. And, but we're also not only lobbying uh, uh, governments, we're also strongly talking to the markets because even though often we think that the internet is this public space, it's completely built on uh, private infrastructure. All the uh, undersea cables and the internet service providers, uh, they're not owned by governments in, uh, uh, in the largest parts. They're owned by investment companies or, uh, or otherwise, you know? So it's, it's very important to also understand importance of, uh, uh, of, of, of business uh, in, in, in run, running the internet. So what we are doing is that we're creating, um, we're helping to work on technical policies, we're helping work on uh, legal policies and standards on a intergovernmental, international, but also national level. We're working at the Internet Engineering Task Force to ensure that the Internet protocols respect human rights, but also at an organization called the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers to set the policies for uh, Internet names and addresses. So to ensure that the telephone book of the Internet is also adhering to human rights. I think it even gets worse when you look at initiatives like uh, Facebook Zero, or uh, other practices of zero rating, where we have a, a separate internet, which is a poor internet for poor people. So where if you have no money, you can have free access to Facebook, where you have to go into a direct contract with Facebook and sign over a lot of your privacy rights because you're on the server of this American company. But then on the other hand, we've also seen um, uh, uh, conflicts and uh, in a, uh, like Gamergate, where there is a prolific sexism uh, on the internet as it is of lying. So I think this underlines again that the internet is not this magic rainbow world where everything is different as it is online. No. So we also need to work on our values and uh, how we engage with each other online. And we're still at the beginning. What I think is the biggest problem is the increase of centralization on the internet. Is that increasingly a smaller number of companies are dominating what we, uh, what we see and can access. And this is on the front end what everyone sees. It's uh, Google, Apple, uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. But it's also companies that are dominating uh, the hardware and uh, the transatlantic lines. And this is also in radically increasing their uh, their power hold on us, mm -hmm. and that is that is that is extremely dangerous. And I think that's a danger uh, uh, for our individual rights, but I think also for uh, interoperability on the internet because it changes uh, the power relations yeah. between this small new company that's innovative, that's smart, that's good. They can be sold out of the market like this by Google if they seem to be a threat. Yeah. So getting rid of Google is also getting harder and harder because this would be a free market argument, right? That uh, 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 the market will regulate itself. But I think what we actually see currently on the internet is complete market failure because we are ending up with an oligarchy of a small number of very large companies mm. instead of a lot of small and medium business and enterprises. We're increasingly becoming sucked into these, into these main big corporations that are showing us what style we would have, but also giving us the options that we have in a world where we can only like things, where we can only heart things, where we can only say, this is beautiful, this is acceptance, let me buy more. No, I think we should also have a space for, uh, for divergence, for playing it yourself, and also having it not polished. So uh, try to understand a bit more of the uh, open source community and open source software that's available there. Uh, that open source software means that the source code, the information that you're, where your programs are made of, is available to everyone. 
and also available to you so you can check it and improve on it and um, you can have a look at that and secondly you could have a look in uh, alternative services so right now you might be using uh, whatsapp or telegram where the companies have access to your uh, uh, to your message data why not use uh, signal and install that on your uh, on your android or iphone and by that secure your information and by that by making little steps you can uh, uh, you can get your sense of ownership over the internet back and maybe you want to run your own um, email server or get a server with a local lo local hoster that you trust mm -hmm. so that you can have your own domain and not your gmail address where you're actually a uh, advertisement board for google mm -hmm.